Hi, my name is Evan, and I will be walking you through how to make a digital thermometer using Arduino and the uh, Autodesk Tinkercad circuit simulator software. So when you first make an account on the uh, uh, Tinkercad software, uh, you'll probably be redirected to this page. Uh, this is the 3D Designs tab, but we will be working primarily with circuits, so we will click on the Circuits tab. Uh, here we have the design that I made to test this, uh, but to make a new circuit, click on Create New Circuit. And then you'll get this blank screen with a bunch of uh, common circuit components on the right. You have normal things like resistors, LEDs, uh, some power sources. Uh, the Tinkercad software integrates the use of Arduino. So there's uh, you can simulate Arduino code and Arduino input-output, which is really helpful. But what we're going to do, and also to place some of these, uh, for example, you just drag the battery out, and now you can connect things to the terminals. Uh, what we're going to do, though, is go down to the Starters tab, and then Arduino, and we're going to go to the LCD. This takes a little second to load. Oh, yeah. So this is a little complicated to wire up, or a little time-consuming at least to wire up. Uh, so we can just use the starter, and it does everything for us. So first thing we want to do, um, actually, and I'll go through all of these um, connectors in a second. The first thing we want to do is just verify that it works. We're going to click on this code tab. And this particular starter comes with some code installed. Normally, the Arduino would not um, have this code. Um, and all of this part up here is just one giant comment that's telling you about the program, what some of these uh, connectors mean. And this program is actually just from the Arduino official documentation on their website. So it's pretty easy to find this. And um, there's a little bit, there's like an article attached to it explaining what it means. And there's a link to the article there. So what this is doing, uh, this line is doing is importing the liquid crystal library which handles a lot of the more technical problems with uh, working with one of these liquid crystal displays behind the scenes. Uh, that's pretty nice because it can get pretty complicated if you're trying to do it all yourself. Um, so here we're initializing a liquid crystal object, um, which is just basically setting up this, uh, making sure all the port numbers are correct. And these numbers here correspond to 12, 11, 5, 4, 3, and 2. Correspond to these 12, 11, 5, 4, 3, 2. Um, and then the setup here, this is just explaining or stating that our LCD has 16 columns and two rows. And if I turn it on, you can see there's 16 of these rectangles here and two rows of them. So, uh, this line here just prints out this message, hello world. And then that's the end of our setup. So this setup will only run once. Uh, this loop function will run until we stop the simulation. And what this is doing is setting the cursor to position 0, 1. So this, is, uh, this LCD display is 0 based, meaning that this H is in position 0, 0. So when we set the cursor to 0, 1, now we are in this spot here. Uh, and what it's doing is it's printing the number of milliseconds since the program started divided by 1,000, which just makes the number of seconds. And you can see that matches the simulator time up at the top. Uh, now we'll get into the LCD hardware. Uh, you've probably seen LCDs before. They're pretty common. Um, they're often used in digital watches, calculators, things like, of that nature. Pretty low power devices as well, which is useful for a lot of things that are battery powered. Um, so we're going to go through some of these connectors. Uh, first of all, what's important to notice about the breadboard here is if you mouse over any one of these row, any one of these pins, uh, it shows a bunch of green circles. That is showing electrical connectivity. So like in this row here, these five pins are all electrically connected. Um, so you can see up here, uh, like these, this purple wire is in one of the five pins, and this other purple wire is on another one of the five pins, and those are connected together. These uh, rows on the side are called rails. 
and they're really long electrically connected things. They're usually used for ground and power, like we're using them here. Uh, here we have 5 volts connected to our positive rail and ground connected to our negative rail. And this uh, couple of wires over here are just connecting, uh, connecting ground and power to these two rails if we chose to use them. But we will not need to for this example. Uh, so these two pins here are the power and ground for the LCD display. Uh, pretty straightforward. Just plug in 5 volts to power and uh, ground to ground. This one here is contrast. Uh, so if I start the simulation again, uh, that's what this potentiometer is for. This controls the contrast. Uh, this is a pretty common problem in real LCD circuits because uh, the contrast will not always be the same for every single LCD you buy or find. Um, so you may have to mess with this gauge and find the correct contrast for your, your specific device. And how these work is you have the 5 volts connected to one terminal, ground connected to the other one, and this one in between goes between 5 volts and ground depending on where you uh, rotate this dial. Uh, this register select and enable are both uh, control for whether uh, you can or which or which uh, one of these little rectangles we're modifying and whether or not we are allowed to modify it. Uh, read write is pretty similar. Uh, write is low and read is high, so we connect it to low voltage or ground. So it's always on write because there's not really a use in reading from our LCD. Uh, these four cables here are connected to our four digital pins, and those are the data pins. Um, so they send, they basically send which character we are going to place in the uh, space indicated by these ones. Uh, and uh, this LCD display is also LED backlit, which means that you can see it in the dark and the contrast is a little bit better. Uh, so to give power to our LED, we have to use a step down resistor or pull down resistor. Um, this just makes sure that there's not too much current going through our, LC our LED, which helps protect both our Arduino and our LED. Uh, just good practice in general. And these don't have to be especially large <coughs> uh, resistors. Uh, this one's like 220 ohms. But uh, that's so this is connected to fi the 5 volt power, and then that is connected to the LED anode. Um, this LED is directional, so it's important that the anode is connected to the pull-down resistor and the cathode is connected to ground. Okay. So now I'm going to go... A premature. Uh, so now we can just go back into this basic circuit components tab. And we're going to grab our temperature sensor. So these temperature sensors are pretty nice. Um, they're already pre-calibrated, so we don't have to worry about, uh, if they weren't pre-calibrated, we would have to take a large sample of temperatures and find a best fit plot and then program that function into our code. But these ones are pretty straightforward. Um, they're nice and linear also, which is helpful. Uh, and so this has a three-pin device. The This pin here is power. So to draw new wires, you click on a pin, and then you can drag it around and click on a different pin, and it will place. I like to keep the colors consistent, so I'm going to make this one red. This one is ground, so we're going to connect it to ground here. Make that black. And then this middle pin will be our signal output of the um, temperature sensor. So we'll have a cable or wire going around. If you click on empty space, it makes this nice curve, makes your circuits look really nice and clean, and it'll connect it to A0. You can also modify the curve afterwards to make it a nice 90 degree angle, and it locks that way. And I'm going to go ahead and make this yellow because I like yellow being signal. Um, so now we have all our wiring hooked up there. Uh, it doesn't really matter which one of these analog 
inputs you attach to. You just have to keep in mind what the number associated with it for your code. Um, now I'm going to switch over to the other, or the prototype that I was working on before, just so I don't have to retype all the code. And this prototype will also be available in the video description, um, or a link to it, and you can mess around with it and change the code if you want to. That should be a pretty good example of what, uh, or a good starting place at least. So here I'm going to explain some of the code. Um, so this is relatively, most of this is relatively the same for the setup. Uh, we are getting our liquid crystal library. We're setting up our LCD in the same way. Uh, these are a couple other variables that I'll be using. So I'm just initializing them here. Uh, and then for the setup, set up LCD in the same way. I like to initialize all my variables to zero. Um, it's pretty good practice just so you don't, or you always know what your variables are because sometimes they don't initialize to zero. And then here I'm just printing out today's temperature. Um, so that's the end of the setup portion. So now we're going to the loop portion, which is the functional part. Um, so we have this print statement that just is a bunch of spaces. So the reason I have this is because um, sometimes when you're printing like a three digit number, for example, and then swap to a two digit number, the last digit of the three digit number will still be there. And that's kind of undesirable for us. So we will um, just replace the entire row with spaces or basically clear the entire row. Um, so then what we do is have this analog read function. Uh, what this does is it takes the uh, well, so it takes an analog value, which an analog value is something that would be experienced in the real world. So, like light, uh, sound are all analog values. Uh, voltage is an analog value, which is the one we're actually receiving here. So this takes a analog value in voltage and will convert it into a digital value, which will just be a number between zero and a hundred. Or 1,023. Um, and then we'll store it in this variable degree. So now what we want to do is retrieve that original voltage. So what we're going to do is divide by 1024, which will get us a number between 0 and 1. And then multiply by 5 to get us a number between five or 0 and 5. Uh, and that number that we now have is representative of the voltage that we receive here. Uh, the reason we want that is because we uh, can go over to the data sheet. So this is the data sheet for this TMP36 device. And uh, what we see here is that there's a 10 millivolt per Celsius scale factor. So we really want to get the output voltage because now we know how to convert that output voltage into Celsius. Uh, Another thing to keep in mind is this plus or minus uh, half volt or half a degree Celsius linearity. Um, we'll be using that as well. So here's where the linearity comes in. Um, what all I did for this was uh, set it. So I can show you the simulation. Uh, when you simulate this temperature sensor, uh, you can change the temperature. So I just set it to like a room temperature value, like 25 D. Let me get that back. Oh, whatever. I think this is well, 24C. Um, and then I subtracted the amount that would make it uh, 1 one hundredth of 24C. Because I know, and that 100 comes from this 10 millivolts or 1 one hundredth of a volt per degree Celsius. So I did that offset. I then multiplied by 100 to get to um, actual degrees Celsius rather than hundreds of degrees Celsius. And then I set my cursor, which is the same process as before, which I set my cursor right here. And uh, in this example, I also converted it to Fahrenheit. Uh, this is a pretty standard uh, conversion, uh, just the normal conversion formula. One thing to keep in mind when you're doing something like this, uh, so if you did, for example, 
If I stop simulation to edit my code. Uh, 9 over 5. Um, the output of this would just be 1. And the reason for that is because these are both integers. So the code or the um, SF, sorry, compiler decide, or says that, oh, you're, you want your output to be an integer too. So it takes anything that would be after this, which in this case would be 0.8, and just cuts it off and gives you only the integer value. Now if we do 9.0 divided by 5, that will actually give us 1.8, because this value here is a double, which means it can be uh, a fractional amount. So it, it uh, the compiler sees that you have a double and says, OK, that means you probably want a double output. So then you get the actual value instead of the uh, rounded one. That's just a little anecdote about integer math. And that's the same reason I have this double uh, here for degree. Uh, if I didn't have that, it would just give me a zero every time because it would be a number smaller than 1024 divided by 1024, which rounded down is always going to be zero. Uh, but here, uh, now it gives me an actual decimal value. Um, so I have that. And the formula is 9 fifths times the degree Celsius plus 32 to the degree Fahrenheit. Um, and then, so this line here is just formatting my output. So I'm turning the num or integer here, or double here, into a string, because you can't concatenate uh, different data types. So I have to turn everything into a string, and then I can just add them all together. This here is getting the degree symbol. The one in my browser um, didn't work. I think it was actually some other character. So this is just the ASCII. Uh, code for a degree 178 um, and that's pretty straightforward and then I'm just adding a letter F and then all I'm doing is printing the output so once again if we start my simulation we have 25 degrees C which is pretty close to 76 degrees Fahrenheit um, minus 40 is the same we can also try uh, 100 C, which should be 212, which is pretty close. Um, so these devices aren't perfectly linear. So you will get some things that aren't like 100% accurate. Like you see, we have uh, 0 degrees Celsius here and 31.64 instead of 32. Um, another, another thing to keep in mind is that this slider is uh, rounding a, a fractional value into an integer. So it's not ex like here, it's not exactly 30 degrees Celsius. So that means you will get an output that's not exactly whatever that should be in Fahrenheit. Uh, and you can slide that around a little bit. And these devices work from minus 40 to 125C as per their data sheet here. So hopefully you won't be measuring any uh, ambient temperatures outside of those unless you live somewhere very, very cold. I don't think it or like Venus or something. Um, but and with that, uh, that's pretty much all I have for this video. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. And again, I will be including a link to this Tinkercad file so you can mess around with it a little bit more, um, add to it, see what changing things does. But with that, see you guys next time.